Hey boys and girls, this week is a very special holiday. I don't know if you're aware of it, but on Tuesday, we have a special day called Cinco de Mayo. It's an important holiday that you're gonna be learning about this week. And the holiday goes along with our story, Chicks and Salsa. This is such a fun book. You're gonna love listening and reading it online. Now remember, there is a link on your sheet. We're using the purple grid this week, marked May the 4th through the 8th. And in the reading section, you will find the link for this story to be read aloud. Now, as I always say, if you can't get the link to work, you can go to YouTube with your parents' help and search Chicks and Salsa. It is by Erin Reynolds. And then just put four kids, read aloud for kids in the search bar. And the read aloud for this story will come up. If you have trouble with the link, that is always a simple way to find the book read aloud online. Just search YouTube for the title of the book and the author, Chicks and Salsa, by Erin Reynolds, Read Aloud for Kids, and you can find it. I know you're going to love this story. It is super, super funny, and it also ties in with our theme this week on the holiday, Cinco de Mayo. This week, you're also going to have some new vocabulary words to learn. They are listed on this sheet here. You have the words aroma, cuisine, perch, rumbling, uproot. Okay, so five new words to learn. Okay, you're going to be doing some activities with those. You can also use this sheet to help you complete your two vocabulary activities where you're matching the words in the pictures and where you're putting the correct word into the blank to make the sentence make sense. Okay, our vocabulary activities are meant to help you learn new important words that you might not already know, so keep that in mind, okay? This week, you're also going to be learning about a skill um, feelings versus character traits. And you have a poster to kind of help you understand what that means. Feelings are something that people have temporarily. It's a quick emotion due to a situation. So like if I slam my fingers in the door, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna be upset because I am having a feeling. It hurts. It's a quick emotion to something that happened. But a trait is like a consistent part of a person's personality. I don't always cry because my fingers don't always hurt because I don't always slam them in the door. So that's different. A trait would be like Maria is drawing... I'm sorry, Maria is always performing or drawing because she is an artist. An artist would be a character trait. A feeling would just be how somebody feels at the moment. So the example up here is a little girl who is angry and it says that Ella is grumpy and angry because she lost her homework and had to redo it. That's a feeling. A character trait would be like Maria here who is always performing because she is artistic, okay? It gives you some examples here. Feelings were things like angry, sad, excited, and lonely. And traits are like being confident, selfish, friendly, or thoughtful. Now, all feelings are not good or bad, and all character traits are not good or bad either. But the difference is that one lasts for just a little bit, and the other one usually sticks with you for life. So keep that in mind as you're reading the story and as you're doing these activities. One of the activities that you're gonna be completing is a story called Sammy the Snake. You can read this story with an adult a couple of times, and then you're gonna think about these two questions at the bottom of the story. It says, what is a character trait of Sammy's? If you wanna refer back to the list, 
of the character traits that might help you. And then it says, what action supports this character trait? You're gonna write what in the story helps you to know that this is a character trait about Sammy the snake. I want you to write complete sentences for those so that we know that you are a good writer. All right, along those same lines with character traits, you have another activity here, and it says actions and dialogue. Character traits. Name a character trait of a rooster. So you're gonna think about a rooster and you're gonna name the character traits. Give an example from actions or dialogue that support your answer. Okay, so in the story that you're gonna be listening and reading to, Chicks and Salsa, it's about a rooster and lots of roosters exact, actually, but you're gonna be listing some character traits of the rooster and then you're going to write also about examples, write examples of actions from the story that support your answer. So maybe he acts proud in the story. And you can write about how he acts proud and give some examples of that. He acted proud when he did what? Or he acted proud when he showed what? Traits that happened in the story. Then you can draw his picture right here. Okay? All right. Another activity that you're gonna be doing this week with your story is retelling. It says on this page to retell the story in your own words. Go in order, beginning, middle, and end. So I want you to write, boys and girls, two sentences that happened at the beginning of the story, Chicks and Salsa, two sentences that happened in the middle of Chicks and Salsa, and two sentences that happened at the end of Chicks and Salsa, okay? You can use the traits page if you need to to help you with your writing, or you can also look on the back, and it has some questions here from your comprehension check that you're gonna do, but it also has some words that you might need help spelling, and they're all here on the back. Like here's the story title, Chicks and Salsa, that might help you with a word, okay? Here's the word rooster. That might help you also with your writing on this other page. Okay, your last activity with the story this week is gonna be your comprehension check and it's on the back. And you're just going to color the bubble, color in the bubble by the correct answer. Okay, so you're just gonna answer these questions and at the end, you're going to review that skill about the action that would prove that someone was acting a certain way. And you have a picture box to draw a picture. Okay, the other thing that we're gonna be working on this week in reading is a language skill called homophones. You have a little poster about homophones. We're gonna talk about this for a minute and then you have several activities this week to go along with it. A homophone are words that sound the same but mean something different. And it gives you an example here on the bottom. Eight chickens, eight chips and salsa. So we have the word eight, which is a number word. And then we have the word eight, like the chickens are eating something. These words, okay, sound the same, eight and eight, but they are spelled and mean something different. Eight, like the number, and eight, like you're eating something. Okay, this week you have several activities to practice that. The first one is on the back of that page, and what you're going to do is you're going to look at the bottom and you're going to write the homophone or the word that sounds the same as the word in the picture box. It has the word written there and a picture so you can match those up. And here's the very first one, okay? There's the number eight, and here's the word eight, like you would eat food. So you're just gonna write that word here in the box. Now don't cut these out, because if you do, you're gonna cut up your poster. Okay, so just write the word with your pencil today. All right, another activity that you're going to be doing with homophones is you're going to use 
these sentences and you're going to choose what word goes in the blank that is spelled correctly and makes the most sense. They're all homophones. So it says, number one, Ron blank, his horse in the rain. He rode R-O-D-E or he rode R-O-A-D. Okay, this first one, R-O-D-E, would mean like you get in a car and you go somewhere. The second one would mean the actual road that you traveled on. So to make sense in this story, Ron blank his horse in the rain, you would want to choose the first one, R-O-D-E, because that one means that you're actually riding something going somewhere. Okay? All right. The next two pages go together, and you're going to find a list of words and pictures, and you're going to use this with this page, okay? The directions are up here on the top, and it says, glue one homophone pair on the puzzle and write a sentence below using each correctly, okay? So you're going to cut these out, Okay, the picture can stay with the word, so just one cut here. And then you're going to match them over on this page, okay? So the word eight, like you eat your food, and the number eight, like the word, you would match those like a puzzle. So one would go on this side, one would go on this side, and you would match them going across. Now, I know there are a lot of pictures here, and you may not have a lot of room on this page. So if you wanna just pick four or five to kind of glue along the edges where you can match them up, that will be just fine. Okay, all right, a lot of fun stuff to do this week in reading and language. I hope you have a great week learning about Cinco de Mayo and the Story Chicks and Salsa. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.